Hi ladies! I am doing a chatty get ready with me. I am meeting with some friends to do a work sesh on a Friday today and I decided why not wear my free wig. I am by no means an expert, not even close at makeup, but I figured it would be a good time for me to chat with you guys and let you know the things I've learned after a whole year of wearing hair. So let's get started. So on February 3rd of 2019, I made an impulse purchase. It was the biggest impulse purchase that I had ever made. A few moments later, I got a receipt in my inbox for my highlight wigs. Yeah. It was the first topper hair piece really that I had ever purchased. It's been a full year of me wearing hair and I am just so, so grateful of everything hair pieces have given me, the personal growth I've experienced and all the information that I just continue to learn about the hair world. I had decided to actually purchase a topper after seeing my wedding engagement photos. I put my hair extensions in, but my hair was so thin you could easily just see them peeking through. I figured though in the pictures I would be able to like strategically place them and make sure they weren't showing. And then it rained. So all the volume and the teasing and everything that I put in my hair, like it just all fell flat. And when I got those pictures, my heart just sank. I was getting ready to marry the love of my life and I wanted us to like remember those moments with positivity and not thinking about my hair and like all those negative emotions that surrounded that. And I just realized I don't wanna go through that during my wedding day. So I went on a very, very proactive hunt to look for a solution. And I went on Instagram and I literally searched hair loss and I found hair toppers as a result of that. And I just decided, you know what? Let's just try it. Let's just see what works. And when I first got it, I was, I don't know, I just felt so nervous. Um, I felt like I was literally hiding a skeleton in my closet. My hair was in my closet and it was a secret that I was hiding from everyone and I just felt like this foreign person when I looked in the mirror at first. I, it took me an entire month for me to get used to putting it on the mirror and just like looking at myself. I would spend an hour just staring at myself in the mirror with the topper on and just like trying to figure it out and how to like figuring out how it looked natural on me. I remember the first time that I wore it out in public at a coworker's baby shower for lunch. I had worked from home in the morning and I uh, went to the baby shower with the topper on and I was just so, so nervous. Um, people definitely noticed. They asked me, well, they told me, oh my gosh, your hair looks so great. And then one person asked me, it looks so great. What did you do with your hair? And I told her, I'm actually wearing hair extensions. I'm trying out different solutions for my wedding day. And I quickly just like tried to change the topic. Um, and I think for the most part, people bought it. I went to the bathroom probably every five minutes to check whether the hair topper was in place, whether it looked okay, and was feeling very self-conscious. But like I said, I had a deadline. I needed to find a solution for my wedding day. So I forced myself to wear it every single day, um, even though during the times that, you know, I could have sworn people noticed and I just felt so uncomfortable. It was kind of windy out. All those situations where I would feel really self-conscious, I just forced myself to do it. It wasn't until April that I started feeling a little bit more empowered and was really inspired by continuously seeing other women on Instagram sharing their story. And so in April, I started Strandy, my Instagram account, sharing my story. Back then, I started it really for the purpose of empowering women and just hoping that, you know, if one more woman did not have to experience the same thing I did and feel alone, then I thought it would be worth it. My husband calls these like my tiger stripes when I do it. <laughs> but I realized that actually in the process of me doing it, it was therapeutic for me as well because it kind of reinforced to me when I got so much encouragement from you ladies, people sharing their own story with me. It kind of made me also realize and remind myself daily that I'm not alone. 
The next few months after that was really just like trying to chase the learning curve in terms of wearing hair. I can't do that part without talking, with talking. <laughs> I was planning my wedding at that time, like really still open to trying products that grew my hair back. I still am. And I just felt like also wearing hair then just gave me the peace of mind that if those didn't work by my wedding day, I would still have the, you know, option of wearing my hair topper. But during those few months, I learned my very first important lesson, which is your first hair piece will likely not be the hair piece that is perfect for you. I know that's really frustrating to hear, especially because I know how pricey these hair pieces are, but it's just so hard to find what really works for your head shape, your hair color, the types of materials that you like. There's just a lot of things out there to explore um, before finding the one that right works for you. I'm not saying that you should go out there and spend a ton of money to buy all these different types of hair pieces, but if there's the first one you get in the mail, looks really silly or if you find that it's just not working for you to just not be frustrated and give up there's so many different types of hair pieces out there that you owe it to yourself to give give hair another chance just try a different piece do a little bit more research on the materials that may work for you just don't be afraid to try again if you have the chance the second thing i learned is you're gonna gain confidence in wearing hair the more that you share your story with others. So this goes back to kind of what I talked about when I started Strandy. I was really scared to tell my closest family and friends, um, but I just felt like if I couldn't be my whole and true self with them, then I wasn't being true to them and I wasn't being true to myself and like really just the people that I care about. So I decided to Tell, tell them and my fears are probably the ones that you're going through they might find me weird they might make fun of me behind my back they'll see my weaknesses despite those fears i found the confidence to tell them and i just found out that the people that care about you are always going to care about you i just realized that by telling them we became closer together we're all human at the end of the day and them knowing that you know there this is something that i struggle with and something that has haunted me for so long they were able to just understand me better also verbalizing my experience was really therapeutic it made me sort of sort out the feelings that may have been subconscious or things that i've been thinking inside my head saying them out loud and kind of breaking it down in a very clear way also helped me understand myself i'm a pretty i, I would say like I, last year I was a pretty confident person, but I, there's always subconscious and conscious insecurities that everyone goes through. And verbalizing my experience about my hair loss made me realize that I'm not a horrible person despite my hair loss. It sounds silly to say out loud, but that's kind of, I realized how I felt. Um, I hated looking at myself in the mirror. I hated, um, going outside to functions, I didn't think I was beautiful um, during that time when my hair loss was really bad. After telling my friends and family and knowing how much they cared about me and loved me unconditionally, it gave me the confidence to come out of the hair closet in May. Um, I told basically all of my acquaintances and people that I'm you know, friends with on Facebook about my hair loss and about starting Strandy. This time it was just more about telling everyone who I am. I had already gotten acceptance from the people that I care about the most. I cared less about like the um, people that, you know, you just kind of casually friend on Facebook because you've met them a couple of times or you know them on a professional level, etc. Not that I don't care about them, you know, but it's like I had already gotten that acceptance from the people I care most about. Fast forward to June when I got married. It was literally the best day of my life, you guys. It was surreal. I, I feel like everyone says that about their wedding day, but it really was. It's not only surreal to, you know, find and marry the love of your life, it's surreal to have all your friends and family, family members in one place 
um, at the same time from all different time points in your life. I wore my hair topper. I literally did not think about my hair once that day. I can't describe the feeling and the relief that I had like going into my wedding, knowing that I had a solution that worked for me and just knowing that like I didn't have to think about it because I practiced wearing it for so long. In order to make it natural, it just doesn't come on day one. You really do have to practice wearing it. I contour my face a lot, if you guys haven't noticed. I feel like I have high cheekbones as it is. Like that's a nice facial feature that I appreciate about myself and so I wanna accentuate it. So that this is kind of like what I do. I'm not talking about the products on here because I feel like I'm not like a makeup expert. Please don't judge me on how I put on my makeup. It's probably not right, but it's just what works for me. So you think like my hair journey would just end there and it was like happily ever after, just like my love life, <laughs> but it wasn't. And it probably won't be ever because I feel like with hair, you're just learning so much, not only about the hair, but about yourself more and more every day, which comes to like the third most important lesson that I learned, which was you are beautiful with or without your hair. I feel like those of you who are in this hair loss community like know that and it, it, and it does sound cliche but it actually took me until October to really like live it. After my wedding um, and leading up to my wedding I was you know wearing my topper daily and loving it and getting into wigs and you know different types of wigs etc and I loved it so much that I was, I was wearing it every day and like had grown to rely on it. And it's not a bad thing to rely on it, but I realized I just didn't like myself without my hair topper. It's not that I hated her, I just didn't like her. <laughs> I just didn't want to be around her. And um, it got to the point where I would feel really anxious if like, for example, during my honeymoon, when I forgot my all of my hair, um, be around people without my hair topper on and it was just like that for a few months up until like august during hair loss awareness month when i uh, collaborated with a bunch of women to create a video um just talking about a hair loss and wearing hair it was then that i realized that i don't want to just talk about wearing hair i want to talk about hair loss something that's so taboo amongst women and i just realized that in order to really do that i myself have to be comfortable with my hair loss by september and october and also with just the dallas heat that was actually the biggest transition it was so hot in dallas like the, during the 105 degree days i just could not bear wearing hair there are some days where i just didn't wear hair at all and um slowly i just got used to that i got used to not wearing hair and being around like people not wearing hair like i started out doing buns again and then later i just transitioned to sometimes wearing it in a low pony sometimes when i'm indoors in air conditioning wearing it down and i just kind of like normalized to myself again not wearing hair i proved to myself that i was enough with or without my hair and with or without hair loss and it kind of trickled to other aspects of my life. I was enough with or without my acne. I was enough being a female Asian minority. I was enough with a little bit of weight gain. I was enough just being me. Tackling this part of me liberated me in a way that I didn't realize I needed to be liberated. This the hair is like tangled in these clips. Let me just put this on first. Oh shoot, I got my wig grip. Goodness gracious. This one is from a brand called The Renatural. I collaborated with them in the past. They gifted me this wig grip. I also have a discount for discount code for it. I'll link it down below. It is just the best at like keeping your wigs in place. It's only one size, which is I guess like one of my biggest gripes about it. If you do have a large head, you do need to spend some time like stretching it out and like getting it used to your head shape. But otherwise, it's awesome. I put 
under the wig grip and just clip them in. And with that and the clips, this baby will not fly off. You could go on a roller coaster. And I've tested it out with the wig grip and it will not fly off, ladies. You are good. So it is now February. I am just so, so excited for what is in store for my hair journey. I know that there will be continuously things that I learned for 2020 and grow um, with and without my hair. For those of you starting your hair journey, I hope this helps in kind of like laying out what my journey has been and just to keep you motivated and inspired that this isn't a race, it's a marathon. There are so many like twists and turns that you're gonna go through and to just please be patient with yourself and please stay positive. You will get there and um, I hope this is helpful. I'm excited to talk to you ladies soon again. Until then, I hope you ladies have a great hair day. Bye.